Hey, that smells like money. <laughs> hey, I'm Blake, and this is your tailgate talk. So, if you live in an area where there are a lot of chicken houses, then you know what I'm talking about. This fan is running behind me, it just kicked on, and I'm getting a pretty good whoof of it right now. Yeah, so when you drive through an area that's got chicken houses, if you're not from there, you immediately know there's chicken houses. I mean, it's just like, pff, there's chicken houses. I mean, you know it instantly. It's, a, it's an unmistakable aroma. And if you're, not in that, if you're not in the chicken business, well, that's awful. If you are in the chicken business, you'll say kind of what I just said. Now, we're not. Used to be. My papa used to be. He used to have, used to have chicken houses. I eat chicken house, a big old long chicken house, 100-yard long chicken house, and raised for Tyson. And uh, that's what he would say when you would smell the chicken house. He would say, ooh, that smells like money. Well, I'm sitting right next to my cousin Johnny Trafford's houses and he's got several he's got I think one less than he used to or actually three or four less than he used to uh, but he's still got he's still got a few and uh, there's a lot of chickens in there <clears throat> and uh, just in case you don't know um, when you go to KFC or Popeyes or you know wherever you prefer to get your chicken from it all starts here which is fine. I mean, that's the process of farming. I mean, it starts somewhere and then it ends up on your plate. It's the way it works. It's just the way it works. I was going through town the other day and a, a truckload of chickens that had just been caught from a, a house somewhere was on its way to the next step in the process. So that's just the way it works. And we understand that. But one of the things we don't like to think about is the next step in our life. But it's part of life. I mean, the reality of the fact is we're not going to live forever. We aren't. Death is part of life. I've done a whole lot of funerals lately and been to a whole lot of funerals lately, and it's just a reminder to me that death is part of the deal. God would echo that. As a matter of fact, he would, he would kind of reiterate in, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, when he would say that it's appointed to man once to die, and after that, the judgment. You see, we're going to die. If Jesus does not return during your earthly life, you're going to die. And after that, there's something else. According to Hebrews 9, 27, there's a judgment. So you're going to die, and then you're going to stand before a holy and righteous God who's going to weigh out some things. Now, the world would tell you, society would tell you, this Hollywood idea of judgment is that God will put your good deeds on a scale and your bad deeds on a scale, and if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, then He'll let you into heaven. But listen, that is not at all what the Bible would teach us. And I would much rather hang my eternity on the nail of what God says than on what Hollywood says. So what does God say? The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Bible says that it's by grace that we're saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, so no one can boast. What does that mean? It means that there's not some weird scale in heaven that God's going to put all your good stuff on and your bad stuff on, and you've got to hope that it outweighs the bad. The Bible says that Jesus came to fix the bad stuff, to fix the sin that is killing you, that is separating you from God. And the Bible says that you can have that sin forgiven by grace, through faith in what Jesus did for you. So you can be ready for that death day when it comes. And that judgment day when it comes after that death day. You see, death day is coming for us all. And judgment day is coming for us all after that. Are you ready? And you can be. Because of what Jesus did for you so long ago.
right now, today, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this tailgate talk from, you can cry out to God and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for me. I know you were buried for me. I know you were resurrected for me. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin and be my Savior. Listen, we would love to help you start growing in your new walk with Jesus if you've just made that decision. Reach out to us through the Life Word page. Beautiful thing about the Life Word ministry is that now there are next steps that Life Word can help you through in this new journey of discipleship. Reach out to us through this Life Word page so we can help you on that journey to being a growing disciple of Jesus. We're all going to die. Are you ready for that day? Listen, thank you so much for joining me today on the tailgate. It's an honor that you would chose to give me a few minutes of, choose to give me a few minutes of your time today. Do me a favor and click the share button right below this video so others might take the time to watch this video as well and know more about what Life Word does. Hey, until next time, I'm going to save you a seat right here on the tailgate. You never know where we're going to pull up and drop the tailgate and have a chat. Until then, I love you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on a tailgate talk.